Hello, welcome back, and welcome back to another episode of Bushcraft Beginnings. So I'm really excited to share with you today, guys, my top four ways to make pot hangers, bushcraft style. So we've got a lot to do, stick around. So here's the basic tools that we'll need today. See I've brought a knife and my saw and a small hatchet. So the knife and the saw are a must, but the hatchet, not really that necessary, but handy for doing some light delimiting tasks. So the knife is the Mora Cansible that I got recently. You may have seen it in a recent video. Quite like this knife. I've also you guys that for woodworking, wood carving and making notches, which is what we're going to do a lot of today, you want a good Scandi blade for that, with a Scandi grind. It makes it much easier. The saw, I'll show you guys uh, know this one, it's the back of that blender. I have an old hatchet here. Quite like this wee hatchet, I've had it for a few years now, see it's quite beat up. But uh, yeah, handy to have if you have it. So I'm going to be doing this totally step by step for you guys so you can see exactly how to do it. Uh, the first pot hanger we're going to start with is the, uh, well I don't know what it's called. We need two uh, Y branches and a beam across. You'll see what I mean when I've made it. But we need to go and find a couple of Y branches. So let's have a look around. Hmm. You guys see that? That might do. See it right there? So there's what I found guys, alright. Not technically a Y branch, just got an offshoot here but we can still use it. The uh, length of these sticks for the purpose of this pot hanger, probably about three foot, three and a half foot. But yeah we can use the hatchet to just take off these limbs like that. and clean up the stick, like that. You could use your saw for that as well, but the hatchet's quite a quick and easy tool to use for that job. So I found another Y branch. I've got a fire prepared here, sort of. The two branches are going to go there like that. And then we put a beam across the top. But first, we need to pick points on the end of these sticks. So now we need to put a point on these sticks so that we can drive them out in the ground. So you can use your knife to do that or you can use the hatchet. So just... Just keep going like that until you get a point that's good enough so that you can just drive it into the ground. Doesn't need to look pretty guys, just needs to be enough so you can just get it in the ground. Good enough, just so we can drive it in the ground. So next you just want to drive them in the ground. Like that. And check if they're the same height. Okay, so now we need a straight stick to lay in between the Y branches. 
So I'll spot the nice stretch stick here guys that I think I'll take. Be perfect for the paw hanger. I'm just going to cut it to the length I think I need. So here we go, there's the stick that I got, that's looking pretty good, we're pretty much 80% of the way there guys with this one. So what we need to do now is hang the pot, now, there's a couple of different ways we can do that, I'll show you a couple of them. So a quick and easy we can do this is we can use a bit of power cord or a bit of string and we can start off with a clove hitch. So get your paracord, lay it on like that, throw it off to the right and throw it over to the left and then put this end through that loop there that we just created on the left hand side and then just pull it tight like that. Right now all we need to do is a marlin spike catch and we're done. Check this out guys, it's pretty cool. So all you need to do Make a loop like that, throw it over itself like that, and put the stick through that loop there. Like that, and then all you need to do is that. I'll give you a quick close up on that knot, the marlin spike catch. So here's the paracord that we've got hanging off our stick. So what you do is you take this end and you fold it over itself and make a loop like that. And then you fold that loop over on the line that's hanging down. And then that line there, pull that through. And then that loop is where you're going to put your stick. So that's how it should look guys. Now I'm going to make a dedicated video on knots, so I don't want to spend too much time on knots in this video, because this video is about pot hangers. So there you have the first pot hanger guys. Uh, as I said, the, the paracord is a really quick and easy way to do it. Uh, I think it's one of the quickest ways to do it, but I'll show you a more bushcrafty way, shall we? So for this next part, this is what we're looking for. So I've just cut this off a branch. So you can see we have a branch coming off here. Quite a small stick. You'll cut this depending on the size of your fire <coughs> and how tall your how tall your uh, pot hanger is and stuff. But what we need to do now is we're going to do what's called a, I think it's a beak notch. You do two diagonal cuts like that, and then you carve a beak. Again, this video is about pot hangers, guys, so I'm not one to spend too much time talking about notches and knots and stuff. So I'm just going to carve this beak notch really quickly. I'll, I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so I've finished doing the knot, guys. So you make two V cuts here and here and you carve out this beak shape. Okay. And that's it. So all we do now instead of our claw fish and our marlin spike catch is we just take that off, pull that stick out. And then, you put your stick on like that, and then you hang your pot on the notch. 
There you go. So that's that one done, guys. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to recycle this stick and get rid of these. So this is a really simple one. We just put the stick in the ground like that. We make a notch here. We put a wide branch here to support it. Yeah. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to make the notch on the end of the stick. So as I, as I always say, if you've got your saw, use your saw, it makes it easier. So I'm just going to cut a wee bit into the stick. Not even halfway. So I'll finish carving the notch for this one. So I think this is called just a V-notch, but correct me if I'm wrong guys. And I'll put a point on the end, so we can drive it in the ground. Right guys, I cut a small wire branch to support the stick as well. So pretty much what we're going to do is drive the stick in the ground. With your notch facing that way. Okay, and then you put your Y branch like that, and you can drive that into the ground to adjust the height. Okay, and that's us pretty much done. There you go. You can see that's why the, you make the notch. If you don't make the notch, it just goes. It just falls off. So that's why you make the notch. So sometimes with this style of pot hanger, guys, I like to give it a wee bit more uh, support and make it a bit more sturdy if I'm going to be hanging quite a heavy pot on it or something heavy on it. So you can make a wee peg like this. So you see I've just found another branch. I've cut it there. It's kind of like a peg and I've put a point on it and you'll see what I mean in a second. So this is the end of the stick that's in the ground. So what I like to do sometimes is get the peg that I just showed you and then you can put it in the ground like that. And that'll make your hanger a bit more sturdy and you can hang larger pots from it. So I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. If you do, give me a like and subscribe, that'd be really appreciated. So the next one we're going to make, guys, is a classic tripod. So we need to find three straight sticks. So there's a few straight-ish sticks in this pile here that I've found. Should be able to get a couple from here. Let's see. So I'll find three sticks guys, as I said, not the straightest, but if you're at a more permanent bushcraft camp, you can spend more time looking for nicer, straighter sticks. It is easier to make the lashing on straighter sticks, but for the purpose of just throwing together a quick tripod, you know, these bent sticks will do just fine. Right guys, just going to do a quick lashing on this. So I'm going to do a full lashing with the frappings as well. I'll show you what that is in a second. But like I say, I don't want today's video to be about knots and other stuff. This is purely about pot hangers. 
So I will make a future video dedicated purely to uh, knots and uh, you know square lashings and diagonal lashings and tripod lashings and stuff like that. Because those are really cool. I prefer to have a dedicated video for them because it just makes it clearer. Okay. So anyway, I'm just going to start with a cool fish. I'm just going to wrap around all, all the sticks a few times. It is making it a wee bit harder because these sticks are so bent. <laughs> But we'll manage. Right, then I'm going to go in between. Okay, guys, the lashings are finished. See if we can get this thing standing up straight. So we're finished now, we're up. You can see that I've left quite a long bit of power cord here. So I'm going to share one of the methods that I use to hang my pot. So what we're going to do is I'm going to tie a top line hitch knot. And that's going to allow us to raise and lower our pot as we need. So I'll make a loop. Pass it in the loop once. Twice, and then outside the loop. Just like that. Once again, these knots will feature in a video in the future. But now we have a knot that's adjustable, right? Like that. So you can raise it and lower it. So, what we do is we get the stick that we made earlier, put that in there, hang the pot on the beak notch, okay, and then you can use the knot to lower or raise your pot. So there you go, that's that one finished. Quite like that one, use that one quite a lot. As with all things, there's a few different ways you can do it, but with the stick and the paracord, it's pretty handy because you can raise and lower it. Also, another thing to note with the size of the stick, if your fire's raging, guys, you need to be aware that if the flames go up too high, they could burn your, your paracord. That's happened to me and then your pot and all your food could fall in the fire and that's not an ideal situation at all. So that stick's actually probably a bit small for me, but since I'd already created it, I used it for the purposes of this. I'd probably want to make that stick a wee bit longer to keep the flames away from the string. So the last one guys is pretty cool, it's probably the most complicated one. I think it's a, a variation of a crane or something. But you really want to leave this one for when you're invested in a, a permanent camp because it takes a bit, of, a bit of time to put together but nonetheless it's really cool so let's get to it so the first thing we need for this one guys is a nice long stick and I'm just going to utilise the materials that we've already collected for this so I'll put a point on the end and I'm just going to Drive it on the ground. Right, so the next thing we need is a stick like this. So I've got a stick that's probably about four or five foot long, right? I have an offshoot here. I've delimbed it and tied it off a bit. Okay, that's what we're looking at here. So this style of crane works with friction and gravity to hold your pot. So we'll have a stick that goes like that, a diagonal stick that comes like that, 
and then when your pot's hanging on the end, it puts pressure on the components and keeps it in place. So just to recap where we are, we've got our long stick in the ground, we've got our beam, we're along here. What I've done is took one of the Y branches that we created earlier and I've, I've lashed it on here, so claw fitch, wrapped and then wrapped around here and finished my claw fitch. And then the uh, Y branches down here, as you can see. I've also put a notch so we can hang our pot on there. So that's us pretty much done with this one. That's quite cool. Some kind of crane effect going on here. So we can hang our pot on it there. And we can raise it and lower it as we need. And it's really the weight of your pot filled with water and, and food and stuff, guys, that's going to hold it in place when you're cooking and stuff. But you can see that it does stay in place without the pot. Now, another thing you can do if you want is you can utilise the stick that we created earlier with the, the beak notch on it. So if you don't want to put your crane too low, but you still want your pot to reach the fire, you could do something like that. And then obviously the good thing about the crane style pot hanger guys is when you're finished cooking you can just swing it out of the road and you can have your fire. Well, I hope you enjoyed that today, guys. Those were my top four favourite bushcraft pot hangers. I really enjoyed making them. I try and make one on, the, on uh, each trip because they're, you know, they're, they're, it's fun. As with everything, though, there's multiple ways to do things. So that was just me sharing the way how I do them and how I like doing them. If you liked what you've seen today, guys, give me a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.